Hello everyone. Hope you all had a wonderful Halloween. A wonderful Halloween spooky bats. Ooh. <laughs> Hope it was a good one. Welcome back. Let's play some Continuo. Here we go. Telemon, same book. This one's called Gallant Suta. And so this one plays against a lot of my natural tendencies. So I thought I'd pick it and we're gonna pick that apart, talk about why that is. So sort of a an upset one and so I'm just gonna talk about this why this sort of goes against my natural tendency you know originally when I was playing this through and I was thinking how to play it I was coming at it a little bit too vertical a little too vertically <laughs> Now, the idea was solid. I'm trying to build energy, anticipation. Now, given the key, given the context of kind of what I'm hearing right here, now I don't know German, so some vocalist is gonna tell me that I'm totally off base with this, but I'm just thinking it's not aggressive. It's, it's like it needs that energy, but it also needs that kind of flowing energy. And so when you start to add in vertical elements, it, it has the benefit and also the drawback of kind of stopping the energy flow. So let's just let's just play this beginning a couple times in a row. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Here's the flowing version. We have a sort of whacked that top note. Let's just do that one more time. You notice how I'm trying to keep keep that energy moving by keeping certain notes long. Now let's try the vertical version. Right, and that's just so, that's like pretty over the top. I'm, I'm exaggerating, of course, just to prove a point. But you guys notice how when you chiff and when you add those vertical elements in, it actually adds in like vertical elements, you know? And so you're, you know, you're stopping the motion. You're stopping where everything is supposed to be going. So I tend to try and play this one a little longer. And what that ends up meaning though, what that ends up meaning is we keep the connection here, but then also we just, you know, you don't, you don't like actively lift and you don't actively press. So I'm going to show you guys what I mean. Um, this is me actively pressing right now to keep the bow on the string, actively on the string. So we have a... All right, that sounds weird. And now let's try it the other way where we're actively lifting. We have a... And that's kind of our chippy texture. And so now let's try this one. I'm not going to actively lift. I'm just going to let it come off. And when it does, I'm going to put it back down. Okay. So we have a, so you'll notice we're sort of cutting the middle here. We have a, I'm playing a lot with this. So you'll notice I start the note and I kind of let it die on the string a little bit. And so the trick is, is lifting right at the tail end or just letting it come off. And that's where your pinky comes into play. You're going to put a little bit of pressure on there. You're going to go and use that pinky and just, just ever so slightly come off. And so what that does is it creates a shape we get. You know, it starts loud and then it gets soft and then you let it ring after you've decreased the volume. So you go, so for example, this first note, we have a, see that? We have a, now what that sets in our ear, the reason why that's important is because this sets something in our ear. We have, bum, bum, bing, bing, bing. So we have a, So 
so now we're playing with some extra little layers and some extra little sections in here. Okay, so we have our... Uh... Now, we have a choice right here. We have a choice in this little section. We can either go ba da ba -dum bum or we can go um, bum 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 right and so let's hear it let's hear it both ways okay we have kind of a connected one a one a long short version that's what I mean by the long short version by the way we have a which is very helpful um, Baroque bowing by the way is the long short long short long short long short you notice how I'm starting at the same place every time right and so that's kind of a classic one I would say in like modern modern baroque stuff is you know the long short but we can do that here we can go okay, we're going. Or, uh, or we can go uh, you notice how i'm keeping those a little bit farther out and i'm going and i'm kind of keeping them nice and short and doing a nice decrescendo into that so you know there's two different ways of thinking about that one little section there and I think that both of them are good because we have our or I would tend to go with the second one because we're trying to push it right and we're trying to push it into this D and then we have another turn here right and so you'll notice in our music here we want to make sure this is like a classic way. You see this octave jump right here, and that's gonna let you know. We have this. So I always think strong weak on these. We have a strong, we have a strong and a weak, and we have a, a little bit of a comma in between. And what that's gonna do is that's just gonna make it sound like this. And you notice how I'm using that repeated note to then go right in to that note. And that note is gonna nice, nicely ring, okay? So that's kind of what you want with a section like this. And let's just hear this before. You notice how we get that nice decrescendo and then that comma separation that we just did, what it does is it sets it apart and then links it into the next part. Again, adding to our keeping things linked a little longer. Then, now with this section afterwards, the classic mistake here would be to think, well, we have all these octaves and we have all this stuff. I'm going to play this all super short, right? Because I want, I want that energy. I want that, you know, I want it to pop. But that is tricky because this gets really chunky and kind of heavy really quick. So, or... Something like that where you're you're adding in a lot of extra noise and character. And the problem is is you have all these octave jumps and octave jumps are gonna just sound loud. Okay, so we have because it gives the feeling that we're going right and but we're just adding in extra notes. And so the extra notes and the octave are gonna be enough. So here's how to accomplish this kind of thing. We're gonna come at it with a short note, long, the nice, like, sort of one of those fake long notes that we were just talking about. One of those, like, fake ones. You know what so I'm really not playing those bottom notes very loud. And that's gonna help because you, you don't, the bottom notes are gonna come through. It's the energy, those extra notes, the octave, those three things, they're gonna just, People are going to hear that, and that's going to be fine, but they don't actually need to hear it, right? We have... What they're trying to go for... Right? And so, it's. I think it's helpful to just... You want to... You want to push a little bit into those ones, and then with the open and the... I mean, the octaves and the other stuff, just... Keep it nice and up towards the fingerboard. Uh, 
especially with those, with these low notes, you can kind of just reach over with your fingers and just sort of brush them, you know? And then F sharp there, we have a little huh, huh, and then we go, and then we have a, an answer to that question. All right. Now, that's a little on the top, that's a little on the nose of that D sharp, you know what I sound like, eh. It's kind of annoying, right? And so let's think about that, let's, let's change that. So you could use a little bit more bow there, and, but if you use more bow at the beginning of something like this, let's just take this figure, let me actually center it in the page here for you guys, and let's just take this figure, if you want to sort of, you can either choose to go short, short, or make these long, right? So let's talk about the differences of those. We have this figure. Um, that's the short version. And let's play the long version. I'm gonna use a little bit more bow and I'm not gonna emphasize the D sharp as much. All right, so you'll notice that that version really pushes us into the E. And the other version really plants us on that D sharp. So the... Now, I don't know what the heck is going on with the singer, but I do see that they have a big, nice rest right there. And if they have a nice rest right there, chances are you don't want to just like plonk something right, right in there, right? You don't want to do that. We're going to actually focus on pushing this into this section over here, right? We're going to use this and we're going to link it so that they feel a little bit more comfortable. So let's think about this. So I think that that's the best. And so what you're going to do is you're going to short, kind of like a cheat note there, and then you're going to, right? You can do some grody fingering, right? Like I just did. Uh, so you'll notice how in this next section, we're keeping with the theme here. I'm really trying to keep this line going through there. I'm trying not to drop it. We're trying to keep keep our hands on the reins for as much of this as we possibly can. So if I dropped it, here's what I talked about. You notice how all of a sudden that just stilts it, right? Now let's let's play through it here. We have a So it feels weird, but what's cool is, is that you're pushing through that section. It makes it different, and also it keeps the energy moving because it's like a reiteration here. We have a reiteration getting close to the end here. All of a sudden it does it again, and this, uh... All right. <laughs> ah, nice. Um, but you'll notice in that section, it doesn't really end. It's not... Right? It's uh He has this scale that suddenly pushes you into the next part. So we have And then you know we have another one of those where it's like huh? And then Now let's talk about these last two notes. Let's talk about these getting into the end here. So now I like to do something really weird where I just kind of squish those two ups. But you could do down, up, down, up, right? But what you really want is down, up, down, okay? You can do whatever the heck you want over here. It doesn't matter as long as you end down, up, down. That is extremely important. So let's go right on that. All right, let's try it the other way. So, keeping with our theme today, um, I think obviously the down down is going to put a stop, and that doesn't really play through the line, that doesn't keep the energy flowing. I don't like it. So we have... Got... 
And so you have to make sure, don't make the same mistake that I have been doing, is you really gotta give that last note some gravitas. You know, you gotta give it some, give it some juice, but then let it go away. So. So sometimes I like to do that with my finger just because the action's a lot lower on my cello over here and I like to just put my finger down and it kind of like sets this sort of tone with my bow. Right, and that's of course if I actually hit the note right, but if I go, you know what I mean? It kind of creates this pop, which is, I don't know, it's kind of nice. It's kind of a nice little thing. So we've identified a couple of concepts here and just because I would like to show how to play this with a modern bow, right? We're gonna have our modern bow with playing this right now. We can uh, we can do our little, oh, we're gonna change over from this to our modern bow. So a couple of things to keep in mind here. When you're playing with a modern bow, with a modern bow. When you're playing with a modern bow, you just got to make sure. So they're heavy. They're a lot heavier. And they're designed uh, in a way that, you know, you can play things at different parts of the bow. And if you have the correct technique, you can get the proper leverage that to create the right sounds. And, and you know, it's, it's all about consistency of registers. And it's all about consistency and just you put the bow in the string. It does the work for you. That's the whole thing behind if you have a really good bow... You know, if you ever played like a really good modern cello bow, you just put the thing on the string, you play a little bit, it just, it works, it's amazing, right? And so with that in mind, we have to come at it from that perspective. It's, it's gonna stay on the string very nicely. Um, and if we go to the balance point, it's gonna jump. And if we do decide to do anything that requires jumping, it makes quite a bit of noise. You know, it makes quite a bit of a statement. So let's just, to show you, in the beginning here, I'm gonna kind of play this with a little bit of attack. And you guys are gonna see how much the bow really wants to jump if you do it the right way. So we got the... You notice how I can get that jumping texture and I can really define the beginning of every note. That's sort of the power of these kind of bows, is you can really, it's so easy to just define notes. Now, that sounded a bit modern to me. It sounded a bit kind of, I don't know, just stilted. It sounded sort of short for the sake of a technical reason, right? And that's not what you want. And so to get away from that, let's play around with the location on the bow that we're going to use. So we have our, instead of playing down at the frog or at the balance point, which seems like it would make sense, let's just go out a little bit Raise our elbow a little bit. Raise our elbow. Get that elbow up. All right, and we go. So, first reflection of mine is, is that the bow does not want to leave the string. When you leave the balance point area, the bow is going to just really, really stick on to the string. And so, trying to do stuff where you're jumping and creating these kind of false sort of uh, textures and stuff, that's just not gonna work. So how can we do that? We're gonna use much more scoot bowing. We're gonna focus less on defining every single note. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on starting every note and creating the illusion that we are lifting our bow and doing all that stuff out here. And if we need to jump, we're gonna make sure that we get back to a part where it actually can do that. So we go out here and let's think about our long texture. And we're gonna go. I think I can do that better. I think I can do that better. So I'm really gonna try and not jump. I'm trying to jump, you see, it's like, playing against my own self here. So we have our... Uh... All right, so you'll notice at the end there, I started to really play around with more at the tip. So let's see how that sounds now, playing more at the tip at the beginning, even though the beginning jumps a lot. Okay, we have... Uh... <laughs> that doesn't work. You'll notice the reason why is because of this little chunk 
right here. We have beam, boom, beam, beam, bump, that thing. And all of a sudden, it creates this kind of texture where it just, it just, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work to keep it out there. So we know that if we get to that part, we have to have our bow there. So we have. All right, so now we're playing around with definition, right? And that is the key, I think. When you're playing with a modern bow, when you're doing this stuff on a modern cello um, with modern equipment, uh, this is kind of a modern cello, it just has got strings on it, but when you're doing that, you gotta think about, you know, the definition of the note and what you wanna be doing with it. So I'm just gonna play a little bit and we're gonna kinda of see how that works. You guys notice how I'm really using a lot more bow. I'm trying not to just dig into it. I'm gonna show you just if I was trying to play this a bit more defined, right? We have a club foot you know I mean it sounds fine it's just it's just not it's just not exciting and you know you, you want to build excitement so let's just create that we're gonna we're gonna go uh It's still a little clunky and I think that you know if you really give it some time and really think about the weight balances you definitely could make this sort of special I of course am coming at it from the approach that I'm playing this on a broke bow we have a So you can really hear both of these bows have definite advantages and disadvantages. I think it is sort of a disservice to say that, you know, you can't do the same thing with either one of these. You totally can. This one wants to do a certain way, and this one also wants to go a different direction. And so it's all about understanding your equipment and how to use it to your best benefit. But that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Playing Continual with me. And uh, I made a new little gif here. Somebody said, you know how when you're shifting and you don't, uh, a lot of cellists, you shift and you smack, you karate chop the side of your cello, right? We're talking about not karate chopping the side of your cello. So I made this guy. Don't chop. <laughs> chop. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you guys next week. Week. <laughs> <laughs>